the name of one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. What would make you drop everything and pursue an entirely new life? What inspired the disciples to leave their nets and follow Jesus? It has always struck me as strange that immediately after Jesus called out, follow me and I will make you fish for people, off they go, leaving their father and their nets behind. We don't get a lot of background details in this story which is typical for the Gospel of Mark. Had they met Jesus before? Maybe they would heard him preaching around Galilee? We don't know. We don't know very much about their lives. We don't know if they were content with their way of living. We do know that Galilee was part of the occupied Roman territories. We know that fishermen were often uneducated and were hardly the first choice for itinerant rabbis looking for to new students. And we know that Simon, who would become Peter, was married. So we can imagine <coughs> a little bit about what their lives were like. But it seems to me that what Jesus was offering the disciples was a new way to use the gifts that they already had. They already knew how to fish. They had probably been fishing in, with their father in the exact same way their entire lives. The same way that their father had learned from his father. And then this rabbi comes along and invites them to see what they are doing from a new context and for a higher purpose. I will make you fish for people. It was an epiphany moment for these men. When they saw that God was about to do a new thing and was welcoming them to participate. It would mean learning new things, leaving some old ways behind, and trusting that Jesus' intention was for their good and for the good of their people. They were probably feeling a combination of nervousness and courage, because change is never easy. But I can imagine that they were excited and hopeful as well, that they would have a part in God's plan for humankind. Even in 2018, epiphanies happen. Even today, God calls people from their regular way of doing things to usher in something new. Now, I don't believe that Jesus is asking us to drop everything that we're doing and leave our families and our responsibilities behind. But I do believe that we're being asked to take a look at our lives from a new perspective and to evaluate if we are using our gifts and our time and our resources to benefit God's people. I will make you fish for people. I believe we're invited to widen our notion of who our people are and consider God's intentions for the good of the whole human family. Passages like this, the call of the disciples, generates many questions for us. What does following Jesus look like in the 21st century? What do we need to leave behind? What did our forefathers teach us that now may be holding us back? What nets entangle us or trip us up? One way to approach these and other questions comes from Ignatius of Loyola, who started the Order of Jesuits in the 16th century. 
The backbone of Ignatian spirituality is a practice called the daily examine. So important was this examine, Ignatius felt, that he sought and he taught his students that if they had very little time on a particular day, if they weren't able to spend uh, time with scripture or with the other prayers, the one discipline that they were not to miss was the examine. There are many ways to practice the examine, but the basic outline is this. Start by coming into the presence of God with a brief prayer or lighting a candle or perhaps the sign of the cross. Some way of acknowledging God. And then ask yourself a few questions about the day that has passed. For what moment today am I most grateful? And then for what moment today am I least grateful? These two core questions can be asked in other ways. What was today's high point? What was today's low point? And then reveal, review the day in detail, paying attention to your emotions in the presence of the one who loves you and knows you the best. After praying those moments that stood out from the day that has passed, Look towards the coming day with hope. Regular practice of the examine can show us where the divine call on our life is leading. It's the way that we can listen for the voice of Jesus who says, follow me. I've been participating in an Ignatian group this year at Mercy Center and it's opened my eyes to the ways that we've been using forms of the examine here at Zion. For example, we've been closing our vestry meetings with three questions. The last segment of our meeting agenda is for appreciations, regrets, and learnings. We share where we felt most energized in our time together and for any disappointments. And we ask what things have been learned that we can bring forward. So all this time, we've been praying the examine in vestry. And as I worked uh, with uh, Debbie and others to compare, compile our annual report for 2017, it felt like the prayer of examine. I invite you to get a copy there are some in the narthex and uh, in the, on the credenza on your way to coffee hour. And prayerfully look over the reports and the photos. And reflect back for yourself. What are you most grateful for in the past year in this community? When were you able to give and receive love? When were you least grateful? And what were your emotions around that? <clears throat> what has been learned? I look forward to being in conversation with you next week at our annual meeting or in one-to-one -one conversations. Because exploring these questions can help us to see Jesus' perspective. For whom are we using our gifts? What is God's purpose for Zion? These questions can help us individually and as a community as we discern where God is calling us. And then we can look with hope to our new year with the confidence that we are following the one who loves us best. Amen.